Paleo hoaxes, slash information, and fun instances of trolling have occurred throughout the field of paleontology and zoology on numerous occasions, something made all the more easier and common to spread over the internet and social media, some being relatively harmless jabs and jokes, while others being potentially detrimental to the understanding of a whole group of animals. A recent example of arguably both came around recently with the sharing of an animal dubbed as well, Sussacarus which was named as such due to looking like a crewmate from, well, the game Among Us, which is evidently viral and widespread. While seeming pretty innocuous and with varying levels of response expected due to meme culture on its surface, what follows after its initial sharing on the 17th of February proved to be an interesting look into the paleo community as a whole, regarding how people deal with hoaxes and misinfo to varying levels and the response that follows as well as how depictions of fake animals can give attention to otherwise little known, but nonetheless real animal groups. I hope you enjoy. The origins of this particular hoax started off as more light asses and in good fun, with the artist known on Twitter as Hop, redrawing a coloured sketch of a made-up thylacocephalon, an unusual group of real crustaceans as a crewmate, which look on a very basic level similar, which they made back in 2021 as a good way to see how they had improved in the time span from then. They also went on to talk with some friends, who also wanted to draw said creature design for fun. And from there, asked other larger paleo and zoology accounts on Twitter if they wanted it on the fun, which meant it quickly spread around more. Named as Sussacarus, it was jokingly said by some to have been found in Sussex County, England, dating back to the Jurassic, with said location being chosen for its suggestive name. More and more people started to get in on the bandwagon of redrawing said animal in their own style, with it from the start never actually being intended to come off as a hoax, though further things changed the whole direction of the fad. When some people started to question the validity of the surge of depictions of said animal, some people started to double down on their chosen narrative that this was actually a real animal, recently discovered. Some came off as more sarcastic than others, though some came across as quite blunt in how they went about suggesting that they were actually real. Some people even started to come up with and draw fake fossils, and even photoshopping real papers and diagrams to varying levels to further the spreading of the meme. This is where the biggest controversy of the whole event lies, and where it got out of hand beyond where it should have, being made very irritating for lots of people for varying, though generally consistent and valid reasons. This has been made note of even by the original people involved in the process, though the ramifications of it could well have had far worse consequences if this wasn't around a group of otherwise little-known crustaceans. Scientists, science communicators, and people passionate about science all know this, and all should. That misinformation spread across social media is a big problem and hard to mitigate once more and more people come across it, and the varying conclusions presented. This has been seen before through cases like Montana Spinus, a fake, like Cretaceous American Spinosaur, created to capitalise on increased discussion of the game Saurian at the time, resulting in even a fake Wikipedia page being made, something which gained a lot of attention and leading to comments about it actually existing, having to be quelled for some not too well versed in the topic, though it was never too serious, and is now looked back on with some fondness for how silly the whole situation was. This is likely to be the case for Sussacarus, though given how much has changed since then, and the ease and increased seriousness of both misinformation on social media sites, and the need for increased media literacy. The editing of scientific papers and diagrams for a simple joke occurrence like this one, could very well have far-reaching consequences for other fields where outcomes of research can in some cases mean life or death, in regards to how some people perceive information and how they go about it. Though this happening through a case of an Among Us crab is really not all that big of a concern in comparison regarding paleontology. People seeing a fake screenshot like this and taking it on face value could well be extended to less obviously silly animals in the future, and committing to doing this for future paleo hoaxes on April Fool's Day or other times of the year both doesn't reflect well in the community, regardless of how many people do it, or in regards to picking up actual instances of misinformation which are harder to disprove and source as to why than the small amount of time it takes to fake them. This is especially the case when it comes to lay people and to those not familiar with a lot of these topics and how to pick up on things like it. Not doing it around April Fools is another thing that can be levered in some ways against the whole fad, though given the nature of how it originated as mentioned earlier, that can be excused. The thing that makes us less bad than something like David Peters, ridiculous taxonomic arguments and skeletals is that Sussacarus was never intended to blow up in the way they did and those responsible for the worst aspects of the fads later apologised, something that cannot be said for pieces, who still continues to this day peddling information that is either woefully out of date, contradictory, as well as deliberately going against scientific consensus in order to push his own ideas at the expense of proper research and rigour. 
While not entirely the same thing, Peter's in this case, and his way of going about things, is a lot more harmful, given how a lot of his blog posts and images are among the highest to first things to show up on search engines when looking for obscure taxa, whereby he uses SEO efficiently to continually bump his information up, and has surely led to a lot more issues over the many years he's been at it, over a silly photoshop of an existing paper that is very easily disprovable when looking for said paper on a site like Google Scholar. The original paper the photoshop was based on was quickly found as an example, compared to stuff like Peter's reconstructions and taxonomic views, which require a lot more back and forth discussion and research to debunk and discredit. Nevertheless, setting this as a precedent for any intentionally humorous paleo hoaxes going forward is not a good thing, both in terms of potential scientific misinformation and confusion, and while being pretty funny, wouldn't really lead to good outcomes, especially if they become more refined down the line. While leading to some negative interactions and discussion of how this was a bad path to take the fad, some comments, well noted by myself and some others to be a drop in the water in terms of the discussion, were very inflammatory and hyperbolic in their criticism, as you can clearly see. So while criticism can absolutely be levies in regards to the manipulation of paper images and diagrams, it has to come from a place of reason, and not tying it into other negative things which for one, are on a whole other level, and two, are not remotely comparable anyways. Talking on social media is also, well, very dry, and so sarcasm and inflection of humour from behind the screen, along with really any nuance, is also easily lost, which doesn't help. If someone is paleontologically well versed enough and knowledgeable on how to find papers, such as checking on Google Scholar and elsewhere, alongside reverse image searching things like the fake fossil, pays a lot more than just taking what's seen on Twitter or any other social media sites at face value if you are indeed sceptical in the future, since while Twitter is a pretty good resource for finding out core information and following scientists and what they're up to, it shouldn't always be a first priority if you want to take things further. The lesson with all of this is to always check verifiable sources first, after seeing a claim as bold as what was shown with Sussex Harris. And while misinfo can affect anyone, it really isn't all too serious that some people got dupes by all of what was thrown their way. It's also pretty funny to note that Sussex Harris in a few ways doesn't too closely resemble real thylacocephalans, the group they're based on, in that there are a few anatomical quirks that gave them way for some quite early on. The eyes just appearing out of the carapace, and not being enclosed and surrounded by it is a big one, along with them being on the top of it, along with other features like the front claws being in a funny position, and a lack of a sufficient movement apparatus, all add up too. The design overall from the get-go, while not being initially intentional, is on its surface level realistic, with the ridiculous name something seeing another genera like Thanos and Han Solo, adding just a little bit more to suggest that since other animals have similarly out their names, it tracks that just maybe something ridiculous like Sussicarus could indeed pop up. All things considered, I take the whole situation in that while being something funny and absurd that initially spreads as a fun exercise in creating an absurd animal and sharing it around, further doubling down on it blew the whole thing out of proportion as being on social media often does, further amplifying among some of the most extreme takes which given to its algorithm where it originates, heavily shifted the discourse for the majority. In the grand scheme of things though, this is all pretty innocuous, given how much other stuff has happened within the field. Paraphrase some hop, while funny to do, it definitely did get out of hand, though just enjoying it as a silly jokey animal that's they were intended to be from the start is, and should be fine, as long as it's not perpetuating anything too harmful. With all of its newfound infamy, Sussicarus now, for better or worse, has received more depictions through art of any real or false thylacocephalon by a wide margin, which really is a testament to how underrated and also underappreciated they are compared to other prehistoric animals. Invertebrates, living in extant, are some truly astounding animals when it comes to diversity, so to remedy this lack of attention, I'll be making a video on the real thylacocephalans that inspired Sussicarus in the first place, to give some much needed attention to them, as well as featuring a ton of art through a little challenge to increase the depictions of these really incredible and alien looking animals. In conclusion, Sussicarus in all likelihood will be looked back on both with some fondness as to how ridiculous online paleomedia can be in terms of jokes, along with a clear reflection of better understanding when something is clearly not an actual published animal, and how some fringe members of the community leaped to massive leaps to try and make it more of a serious event than it really was, or ever intended to be. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals, and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.